Hello, First Presbyterian Church. My name is Mason, and I am your youth and young adult director, and I am so glad to be with you today and so humbled um, for the opportunity to share God's Word with you. You know, we're all striving for the best possible life for ourselves and for our families, and from that desire, we come to God with our needs and with our burdens. He asks us to do this because he is our father who desires to give good things to us, his children. But what happens when we get, when we get what we're praying for? Today, I'd like to share about the responsibility that comes with God's provision. The work doesn't stop when prayers are answered. The work is just beginning. Let us pray. Today, Lord, we come to you humble in our ask that you would guide us in, the, in your word. Father, we pray that your spirit be in every home, every living room, and every device this morning. God, with these are unconventional times, but you are an unconventional God, and we know that you are in control. Father, we pray for every person watching the live stream today or the pre-recorded service, Lord, that you would just prepare their hearts to receive your word. We pray for those who are feeling alone and isolated, that you would comfort them. God, that you would bring them an overwhelming sense of peace. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us read our scripture, Joshua 17, 12 through 18. Yet the people of Manasseh could not take possession of those cities, but the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. Now when the people of Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Then the people of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot and one portion as an inheritance, although I am a numerous people, since all along the Lord has blessed me? And Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go up by yourselves to the forest and clear the ground for yourselves in the land of the Perizzites and, and the Ephraim, Ephraim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The people of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us, yet all the Canaanites who dwell in the plain have chariots of iron, both those in Bethshean and its villages, and those in the valley of Jezreel. Then Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and to Manasseh, You are a numerous people and have great power. You shall not have one allotment only, but the hill country shall be yours, for through it it is a forest, you shall clear it and possess it to its farthest borders." For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. This is the culmination of God's provision and fulfillment of the promise that he made to his people. They're now done wandering through um, the, the wilderness and are now establishing a country for their, own, for their people. But there is complaining from the house of Joseph. You see, the land, it wasn't ready for them to just come and there was no houses built. There was no farming already completed. The land was not tilled. There was work to be done. How many times have we gotten exactly what we asked of God uh, and it turns out to be a lot harder than we thought? I know it's been that way for me many, many times. With this land not being ready for farming, it must be prepared. And if God has given it to you, it is more than possible that um, there will be resistance. Not everything that God gives us is just going to be easy. You see, the people of God were struggling with the same things that they've been struggling with. They were struggling with discontentment, cowardice, and unbelief. But God continues to show his people um, that show the, himself worthy to the people of Israel, yet they continue to struggle no matter what the situation is. The same character flaws that kept their people a generation ago from entering into the promised land are keeping them from possessing the land and the promise that God has for them now. 
God addressed all of these things already in the earlier cha- in the first chapter of Joshua. Joshua 1, 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as uh, with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. In other words, I am with you. In Joshua 1, verse 8, it says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate, it, meditate on it day and night, so that you may ca- be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You keep his word with you, and you will be prosperous. And in Joshua 1.9, one of my favorite verses says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be courageous and strong because he is with you. If God has assured us that he is with us, and he's assured us that as long as we um, keep his word, uh, uh, as long as we are with him, we can be strong and courageous. And if we are assured, uh, and if he assured us that if we keep his laws, he would be, we would be prosperous, then why do we continue to doubt him? We deal this, with the same stuff over and over, and we're surprised by what God has to say. Now, Joshua does not let them off the hook, as in 17, 18 um, of our scripture, it says, And Joshua said to the house of Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh, says, You are numerous people and you have great power. You shall not have one allotment only, but the, whole, the, the hill country shall be yours, for through it is a forest. You shall clear it and possess it to the farthest borders. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. They had more than enough land, and they were fighters. They had everything they needed to take the land. They were just afraid. They were afraid, and they, and they gave in to all of their excuses, but Joshua didn't let them do that. In fact, he just gave those excuses right back to them, and he says, no, you are strong enough, and you are able to take this land from your enemies. They had the ability to clear the forest, but they were also discontent because of the work that had to be done. It's easy to be discontent when your blessing requires work. Be content like Paul. Paul was content in any situation. Paul Paul wrote a lot of letters, including a letter he wrote to a group of Christians who lived in in the ancient city of Philippi. But do you know what's really interesting? Paul wrote this book from jail. He had been thrown into prison and threatened with death as a result of preaching the message of Jesus. People didn't want to hear it, so they threw Paul in jail to prevent him from saying another word. But from that jail cell, Paul wrote the letter we now know as the book of Philippians. He was literally in chains as he wrote these words to the Philippians, to the Philippian church in Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation that I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul was content in any situation, even in prison. He was able to find joy in it and encourage others to do the same. If there is ever going to be the time that I'm going to complain and enjoy a pity party, it's going to be while I am being persecuted for the Lord, personally. But that's not how Paul was looking at it, because he knew how to be content when he had much and when he had little. And as the children of God now grafted into God's family, we need to do the same. Because God has blessed each of us with much, much more than we deserve. Blessings and answers to prayer sometimes come with work and responsibility. We just need to be ready for it because we are able to take the land. We are able to overtake the enemy and we are able to do it in God's name.
You guys have a blessed day.